Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to look. We're in this little lemma here. And uh, so today is um, today. Okay. So today we're going to do chapter two. And so today we in chapter two we learn what a what a valid relation is, what it means for a table to be an actual relation. So there's some properties that it has to exhibit, and um, uh, and then the quizzes on that. So let me first bring up the slides. I want to make sure I have the slides here, and that would be in here for me. It's not that one. This one, no. Um, uh, it's a computer. Uh, let me go here. Here, no. Resources. S slides. Chapter two. Is the air conditioner? Is it the air conditioner's not on, right? Does it seem hot in here? All right, and so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep that over there. All right. Okay, so this, so uh, we're going to talk about relations today, defining defining a relation. And so here we have this our suppliers parts database, and it's got three relations, and these these are all these all qualify as relations. So uh, every relation has to have a heading and a body. <coughs> Um, a heading is a set of attributes, and a body is a set of tuples. Okay, a set of tuples, set, 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 set. Sets can be empty. Okay, just remember that. So it's um, this. This is the heading. This SNO, S name, status, city. It's a list of attributes, and then this this particular uh, relation is has got five tuples. This has got six tuples, and this has got something like 12 or something. And uh, every attribute is declared to be of a particular type. And by domain, they, by domain they mean range of, of values that it can take on. And uh, so, for example, for the suppliers, we have, um, you know, the SNO, which is which is just a supplier number, and then a name, and then uh, a um, user-defined type, user-defined type. So by user-defined type, it is uh, it's it's a, it's characters. It's gonna it's a string of characters, and they have to have probably like you know two uh, three characters or something. Some some limit, no doubt. Uh, they have to have a format. They have to start with an S and have, have some, some digits after that. That's a, that's user defined. Um, same with the names. The names um, are a, uh, a a string set, a set of well, actually characters is kind of the same thing too. Um, I don't know what the, the difference between name and characters is. Anyway, um, in particular, assume SNO and S name are both of type character, but they're defined in some other kind of, there's, there's, there's a, there's an, there must be some additional attributes uh, placed on name to make it different than, than city, uh, making it a user defined, um, making it, uh, calling it user defined as opposed to uh, just a system defined. And we'll, uh, we'll see what that is. Uh, and so, so we use this term degree to be the degree, the degree of the relation, number of attributes. Uh, so this is a four, so it's a four ternary, what's four, quad, quad area or something. Uh, it's, and every uh, body has a, has a set of relations, or no, has a set of tuples that are every relation Every tuple in the body of a given relation conforms to the heading of the relation, so this has to be all true. And so, by the number of, number of tuples is called the cardinality. And if the cardinality is zero, that means there's no tuples. It means it's, it's, it's 
it's an empty table. It's it's a defined table. It's got a heading, but there's no tuples. So um, these are properties of relations, and these are uh, here. In fact, maybe should, should I should I bring up the quiz just so we can we can remember what the quiz is? The quiz is in here. It's this one. And uh, the first one is, the first question is, today we covered chapter 2. By now we should have a firm understanding of a relation, of what a relation is and what it means for two relations to be equal. So we've got two relations. So the first, first there's, uh, you're supposed to say which which ones are equal to each other? Which ones are equal to each other? Okay, and then the second question is um, identify all the reasons why the following table of names and addresses is not a relation. And I give you a hint here for one of them. One of the is that apartment numbers are not required in addresses, but zip codes are. So, um, so uh, there's a first name and a last name and an address and a you know address city state zip code. It's regular. You, you think of a you know, you have your a spreadsheet of addresses for your um, for your Christmas cards. You have a spreadsheet of addresses for your Christmas cards, and um, this is a perfectly fine spreadsheet of addresses for your Christmas cards. It, it, it would work. Uh, you could just put these exact addresses on a on a postcard or on a Christmas card, and it would get to the person. Uh, even though one of them doesn't have a zip code, you know, the post office is pretty good about figuring out wh where at some where an address is without a, a, a zip code, but nonetheless, there are uh, there's a bunch of stuff, a bunch of characteristics of this this little table here that make it so it cannot be a relation. It, it would have to be fixed. Some stuff would have to be changed, and so that's that's question number two. So let's get back to the slides here. So uh, relations can never contain duplicate tuples. So uh, can't have duplicate tuples. Can't have two tuples that are exactly the same. Can't have two records that are exactly the same in the same table. The tuples of a relation are the tuples of a relation are unordered. Okay, that means it doesn't matter what the order of the records are in a table. Uh, it's just um, you know it doesn't matter the order. It, two two tables uh, if if the records if the individual records themselves. <laughs> Are exactly the set of records is exactly the same as another set of records. It's set. It's set since it sets don't set doesn't matter. the ordering doesn't matter. Attributes of a relation are also unordered, so it doesn't matter the order of the columns. Um, it, you know, it, 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 if, if we talk about a it, 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 if if we are defining a, a person and their attributes are their 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 weight and the, their height and um, I don't know. Uh, their ethnicity, let's say, and uh, it and it doesn't matter. It, it, and you make a table of these of the people, and and uh, it doesn't matter what the order of the of the columns of the attributes are. Right? It's you still describe you still be describing the same kind of kind of person. So the so the attributes are unordered, and uh, relations are normalized, uh, which means that every which just means that every tuple in the body conforms to the heading. Uh, and so, normal, normal, normalized uh, relations got a couple more uh, things in there that we have to pay attention to, which we'll probably we'll come to. So, um, so relational variables. We think of a, you know, programming languages have variables that take on values, and and assignment statements assign values to variables, right? And, the right side of assignment statements, there's expressions. And the expressions consist of, of got some variables in there, and you also have some operators on there that operate on the variables. And you, you might have some constants in there and so, and so on. So we're, we're trying to think of, uh, we're trying to learn um, a, uh, you know, relational algebra and talk about relations the same, same way. So the SSPP picture shows the relation values existing in a database at a particular time. If we looked at a different time, we might see different values. You know, we, you know, 
Uh, thus, S, S, P, and P are really variables. They're, they're relation variables, which means they can be updated. In other words, you can make assignments to them. Um, so, uh, so uh, this is so we say that there's. Let's say we have this re this relational variable of S, and this is the current value of S. This is um, so. Uh, uh, S is sort of defined, if you want to think of the type of S as being a type, it's like in any other programming language, language a variable's got a type. Uh, the, the, in, um, in Java, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different kinds of types that a variable can take on. Um, and uh, so, so you can think of that as being defined by the header. And then uh, 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 the set of tuples that that type that that variable contains, uh, or the, as, uh, that variable, the value of, of that variable is its set of tuples. And uh, so a, um, a two, two different, there can be two variables of the same type, uh, which means they'd have the same, they should have the same header, uh, but they have different values. And their values can differ not only by the number of tuples that they have, but also by the actual two values of the attributes inside the tuples. You know, this, all may, this all makes complete sense. So, uh, so here we have a possible assignment where we have we take s, and s is equal to this is the left. So we're going to evaluate this expression here on the right side. And whatever we come up with, we're going to just stick, stick that in S, and then that will be the new value for S. And so what would S be? Well, well, uh, if this is the cur current S and we execute this assignment statement, then S ends up being this down here, you see. That's pretty obvious. You can all see that. Uh, or equivalently, we could say we could use this kind of assignment statement here. Okay, so this is, both of these assignment statements are the same. This is, this is the assignment statement written more like uh, what we're used to in programming languages. Uh, however, if you come in here already infected by knowing some SQL, uh, you know, then, then uh, you know, you're on the dark side, you know, this, this SQL crisis we're having in the rural, rural, rural parts of the country. Uh, it, it, you would feel a lot more comfortable with something that looks like this. This looks just exactly like a like a delete statement in SQL. Well, it is. It's exactly a delete statement in SQL. So anyway, so uh, so tutorial D in, in his language tutorial D. I don't know why he has these kinds of statements because it kind of this is just SQL. But uh, you know we we sort of sometimes we think of it this way and sometimes we think of it this way. But you should see that they're the same. All right, so um, in other words, uh, in practice, da database management systems always support explicit delete, insert, and update operators on relational values. Um, the trouble is, is, is when we, when we um, actually uh, write the delete statement or we write the insert statement or we, we write the update statement and we're picturing the operation of what we're writing down in our head, we're thinking of tuples getting removed, uh, or we're think of, thinking of tuples getting inserted in, or we're thinking of, of, of a set of tuples getting their attributes updated by some way. Uh, so it's, it's, like, it's, like, uh, it's like tuple centric rather than table centric. Uh, and, and so that, that's kind of um, what I mean by if you already know SQL, it's hard for you to think of of not. It's, it's hard to you. It's hard for you to think of um, of a table as a as a variable. It's easier for you to think of as a table as kind of a repository where tuples can get stuck in there, almost like a stack or a queue. But it doesn't have. It doesn't need to necessarily have an order. And uh, so there's a bunch of them in there. And when we do update statements, when we do assignment statements, we're 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 just we're either just like like adding some in there, adding some tuples, or really an update statement is is really what the assignment statement is because we have something in there and we're we're assigning a new value to that place. But anyway, um, um, so that's kind of the difference of what we're trying to trying to get across here. 
So here, here's an example. Um, here's some examples here. Are we into the examples already? Wow. Yeah, we're at the end. Um, this short chapters in the beginning here. So the first one here is um, delete SP where quantity is less than 150. So that's like SP equals SP, um, uh, I don't know, minus, minus quantity. Uh, let's see, what do they look like here before? This one. Like this, so where city? Yeah. Okay, so you can imagine how that's written. This, this is like an assignment statement uh, where we're simply inserting some new new values in. But this is more a um, this is a more of a okay. This this does not look that much like SQL. Uh, the insert SP does, but after that, this is this is completely nothing. I mean, this is this is his language. And it's it's a way of like defining a constant or you know like, like an assignment statement like if you want to like if you're in Java you say you know i equals five you're assigning a constant value to the variable and here you're um, well it's not quite the same if sp were empty if sp were started out being empty then this would be just like an assignment statement where you're assigning a constant value to a to a variable. And the constant value would be these these two tuples with these, you know, with these attributes. This is a this is a, a per perfectly valid. Well, no, no, this isn't really like SQL, but this is an SQL operation. I mean, you can do an SQL operation, but it doesn't look quite like this. Um, it's uh, this in here would be inside here. Uh, you wouldn't have the colon. And these this, these would be field names, but this is okay. And then you have the where SNO equals uh, the S2. Uh, so in practice, database management systems always support explicit uh, relational uh, operators require a relational variable as oh, these require require a relational variable as their target uh, uh, and uh, read only relational operators restrict and project that's like the select statement operate on on unrelational values so it's just it's just an expression that results in another expression and so from now on we're gonna when we talk about a relation we're going to talk about a value so it's the value of the table it's the it's the state of the table at that moment. Uh, whereas, whereas when we talk about a rel var, we're really saying a relational variable, we're talking about a table, and so it's, it's the actual table itself which can take on values, uh, you know, across time, I guess, dimensionally across time. Uh, now, I, I don't think I've covered everything, I, I don't recall covering everything that you need to know for this last question, let me think. Um, no, this doesn't cover it at all. Let's see what the textbook says. That would be, oh, let me go back to here and go to here. Let's see, chapter two. Um, attributes, talked about those. In tutorial denotation, tuples, properties of relations. Relations never contain duplicate tuples. They're unordered. Attributes are unordered. First normal.
Did I get my I got I got my quiz did I get my quizzes out of order? Let me see what the third thing says. Okay, well I guess I just have to um first normal form. Does it say first normal form in here? It does say first normal form, doesn't it? Um let's let's just sort of see in a minute. Uh, definition of first normal form. Okay, good. This is a good one here. Wikipedia. Um, According to Date's definition, a normal form, if and only if it is isomorph isomorphic to some relation, which means specifically it satisfies five conditions. There are no top to bottom ordering of rows. There's no left to right ordering of columns. There are no duplicate rows. Every row and column intersection contains exactly one value from the applicable domain. Okay, only one value, not can't have more than one value in a, in a cell. Columns are regular. Rows have no hidden components, such as row IDs, object IDs, or hidden timestamps. Um, so, uh, I mean, it needs a key or something. No, it, no. It means that it means that that row that well, I. I um, It, it, it seems like five contradicts, uh, it seems like four and five say the same thing. Um, but I'll just tell you what I'm getting at here. Um, and what it is is um, attributes have to be named. All the attributes have to be named. And you have to be able to um, refer to an attribute by its name. Where's the quiz? Okay, all attributes have to have a name because you have to be able to refer to the to the attribute. Yet when when you refer to the tuple, you have to be you have to be able to refer to uh, the name of the attribute. So every attribute has to have a name and has to have a unique name. Okay, so the, so those are the other two problems that this thing has. When you say that, you mean like the third column doesn't work? It doesn't have a name, yeah. And there's a couple then two columns have the same name. So you know this is perfectly legal in Excel, but if you're going to convert this to a table, you got to tighten it up a little bit. And the, and the other thing is that is that is that you just got to split these two. I mean, that's nice that that, that you like to be de you know people sharing email addresses, you know, husband and wife sharing an email address. You know, they're thinking it's like I don't. I'm sorry, they didn't you share your email addresses with your wives or husbands or spouses or partners, but um, but uh. Uh, you know, if, if, if that's the case, you can't use the email address as, as the key to, to the table, you know, to the key to the relation. Which is, so then what do you use? Um, but, but uh, yeah. And, um, and um, the other thing is that, uh, so, so there are things in databases, actual databases themselves, when we get into MySQL, that, that you know, they, they don't enforce all of these, even these first normal form things. Now, they, they enforce... The, the column name. They all have to have column names. But what they'll do, but if you don't put a column name in there for whatever reason, if you're, if you're importing in a table or something, you're naming, uh, it'll just name it for you. It'll come up with a name for you. Um, in fact, um, when I was creating this particular table here, I was using Excel. Uh, Excel has a feature where you can take a range and convert it into what's called a table, it's, and then you can, can convert it back again. and and, and when you convert it to a table, you can make it look all nice and formatted like this. And I wanted to make it, I want to do that. So I converted to a table formatted and converted back. And and it actually inserted a name up there called column three. And it and it changed it changed the second address to address two. So it's like it was like it's like it was like fixing it for me. So I had to go back and you know take it back out again. Um, the other thing is that um, if you've had any experience with, with databases, you know that 
that attribute values can be null. Uh, you know, not not just blank, but null. And so, um, and and the reason we have that in databases, you know, the real reason, the practical reason is, is, uh, is let's say we're typing in the guy's address, and we don't have the zip code, but we still want to get the guy in there and everything, and we want to, you know, we've, we've got that information. Well, um, this this does not mean this does not mean he's got a blank zip code. Just as uh, you know, the the apartment numbers can be blank. You know, those blank apartment numbers are valid valid addresses. So that's actually that's actually um, an attribute that's got like no characters in it. You know, but it's not null. It's a it's a defined value. It happens to be like zero or blank. But this here. You know, it's uh, at, you know as you see it, it's it's blank. But but really, um, you if you wanted to be um, you know real, you know play by the rules of databases and so on, you would say that that field uh, can be null, whereas the other field cannot be null. And so, you know, a blank is perfectly fine for that second address field, but it's it wouldn't, um, but but if you if you leave out the zip code field, it's a null, which means it's nothing, which means which means uh, you don't know. If you search, uh, the trouble with null values in a database, when you search, if when you search there's the some, if you're, you're searching for the value of a zip code, let's let's say you're searching for all the nine six eight one sixes. Okay. Well, when you see that. You see, okay, I'll only get two records back. But if this is null, if there's a null field in there, you don't know how that's going to end up. So sometimes you might get that back too, along with your 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 search for 96816s. So so you have to say, I want to search for uh, where the where the where it equals zip code equals 968216 and not null. So you know, you actually have to put that in there, um, at least. Last time I tried, but you know that's you know databases get updated all the time, and that's where perhaps the version of a database might might uh, be different. But um, but but there's no guarantees when you have nulls. Whereas if, it, if whereas if it were not null, and uh, any research for nine six eight one six is that this certainly would not come up because it's not nine six eight one six. So anyway, um, so that's. Uh, um, okay. Um, now, I this this was a short chapter, and it's only two. This cat class goes one thirty two forty five. Um, so, so so why don't I start? So I'm going to start getting into chapter three a little bit. You know, that would be chapter three because because I'm done with chapter two, and so I could let you out. Um, uh, but I but I think I will. Um, uh, start getting into a little bit of chapter three and maybe talk till two thirty. How's that? Two thirty. It's between two fifteen and two thirty, and then I'll, I'll let you out some time between there, because chapter three is a little, it is a little bit longer chapter. We should spend more time on chapter three, but you should be able to do chapter two. Um, oh, now you know for question number one, the order they just find some of the, but the order the order of the columns is just a little different, or the order of the rows are different. But um, you know, there's actually some. You gotta look kind of closely, and you'll see. So there's some differences in there, and I think there's like, it's like, there's a couple of them that are equal to each other, and there's a couple other ones that are equal to each other, and then that's that's about it. So it's it's not it's it's not that it's, it, it's not that tricky, <laughs> but it can be kind of hard to keep track of kind of what's going on. So. All right. Um, So, um, so when we talk about normal forms, you've heard us talk about that, and we talk about first normal form, uh, we now know the definition of, of first normal form. It's it's, it's a relation. Uh, if it's if it's a relation, if it really is a relation by definition of relation, then it is in first normal form. Uh, that is, all the column names, all the, there's column names for every column. They're different. 
uh, they, there's, uh, there's a bunch of tuples in there. Uh, there's no duplicate tuples. Uh, every attribute field of a tuple has got a value in it that, that uh, conforms exactly to the, to the type of that attribute. Um, and uh, there's a value for every one, and there's not any duplicate values, and um, uh, that, that's it. Uh, so uh, now, um, so once we start talking about higher forms, starting with second normal form or third normal form, then we're talking about relationships between the attributes. There's relationships between the attributes. And um, just to give you an example using this, imagine everything was fixed. Uh, by, by everything being fixed means there's only, there's not any duplicates in there, and there's not any, um, and, you know, and, and the names and so on. Now, um, uh, so, uh, but there, there are relationships between these attributes. Uh, for example, um, um, let me see. I'm trying to think of an example of second second normal. For this this table, if, if everything was fixed, this table would be in third second normal form, not third normal form. I'm trying to think of it as if it is in second normal form. There, it needs to be. No field is dependent on part of, oh, the key field, oh, this O. Oh. Yeah, no, I guess this, yeah, no, this would not be in second order form either. Okay, so, um, okay, so for this table, this table has no, what's, what's called, uh, well, every table, every relation has a primary key, but, but this in, but, but uh, oftentimes, or most of the time, or almost all the time, the primary key is a special column or special column or columns in that table that don't mean anything else other than that it's, they, they, are, they have a unique value in there for, for each tuple. And uh, a key, a primary key is something, is, is, a, is, is a set of attributes or, or a single attribute where you just have to say what the value is for that particular attribute, and you've yeah, and you've identified the entire key. Uh, that's you know SNO is the is, is the primary key for this for the suppliers table, because all we have to do is say S2, and we're talking about Jones in Paris, but all we have to do is say S2 because S2 uniquely identifies. Now, um, um, the supply the SP table has got it. It requires both both keys, both um, do I have a picture of, the, of that here? The SP table requires um, it's um, one is not enough. I mean, you, you can't just say S1 because if you just say S1, well, there's six S1s in there. You can't just say P1 because there's a bunch of P1s in there, and you can't just say the quantity. So you get, but, but you can say S1, P1. If you say S1P1, you're only talking about one, one record, uh, guaranteed. Guaranteed because the key, the primary key, is defined as this attribute plus this attribute. Those two attributes together uh, have to be unique for every key. So there cannot be two S1P1s in there. The, the, the database won't let that happen because the S, SNO and PNO are defined as the primary key. It's, it should actually be underlined like that. But we aren't that far yet, which is why this doesn't bother showing that. But normally we would show it like that, uh, like this. Okay, so let's get back to our, this table. This does not have a, you know, um, person ID or friend ID or you know, address ID or s some sort of ID per person, but um, uh, but the pri but the primary key is the set of attributes. It's it's a set of attributes that will always that where 
where uh, for every single tuple, that set of attributes will be unique. Okay. Well, um, a uh, a relation is defined. The way a relation is defined, uh, there are no duplicate attributes. There are no du duplicate tuples. So, so, if, so at the very least, if we if, if we use all the attributes, at the very least, if we use all the attributes, that can that. So all those attributes together can be the definition, can, can be the key, because there's only one, there, there will only be one Mary Johnson blank 50, 1564 Kalani Highway blank Honolulu, Hawaii 96816. So there will only be one of those. Uh, now, we, we, we needed, it required all of the attributes to actually um, specify or identify the unique record that we were looking for, but we can still do it. Um, uh, now, um, so, but normally we would have uh, some sort of single key, some additional column out there that all it was was it's going to serve as our key and we'd probably say, you know, column names, N1, N2, N1, N2, N3, N4, all the way up and, and or when we add another one, we just go n, you know, the higher n, a higher n value, and so on. And then from from then on, we just just refer to it that way. Okay. So the reason I told you all this is that um, when we talk about normal forms, second, third, and 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 B, C, and F, we're talking about um, attributes related to attributes, and and whether one of the attributes is a key value or not. Okay. So we we have to understand these definitions to be able to distinguish between the normal forms, but let me get back to um, uh, just a, an example of a difference of of, uh, of uh, one way. Let's let's say we did have that key in here, so we got got another column over here, and uh, when we look at this table for the test for, for example, the test for third normal form, the test for third normal form is that no no attribute in there, no, no like non-key attribute, like, like uh, city, there, city is not part of the key, it, it, it's, it's a city is not, um, you know, it's just a attribute, it's uh, assuming that there's N1, N2, N3, um, then, then sit, Honolulu would not, city would not be part of the key, right? In, in fact, if, if we did have a primary set of key values over here, then um, then none of these would be involved in the key. Only that that first column would be involved in the key. Um, but um, when we look at this table, uh, if, if you're uh, if you're if you were a mail carrier or you did a lot of mailings and so on, you would know you know you know that that the zip code defines the city and the state. So, you, you know, in the United States, if if you say someone's zip code, you can you you can you know exactly what the the city and state are. If you go to USPS.com and uh, you can find a zip code. I don't know where it is. Find a huh? This one. Okay, so I go uh, find, look up zip code by, yeah, this one. So uh, I used to live at 55414. So anyway, um, so, so what we have here is that, that, that city and state depends on, on, on zip code. Okay, so it doesn't matter what anything else is. Uh, if we have 96825 in there, we know it's Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay, but we have it in lots of places. So we have a bunch of people in there with zip code 96825, and each time we type in the city and the state and the zip code, city and state and the zip code, it's in there a bunch of times. It's duplicated. Okay, um, um, when when um, you know Honolulu, Hawaii 96825 does does not just depend on Jonathan Jones where he lives, you know. In in this table, Honolulu, 
Honolulu, uh, you know, depends on on this guy. Hawaii depends on this guy. The, the zip code just depends on this guy. But really, Honolulu, Hawaii does not depend, you know, <laughs> um, it, it, it really, it more closely depends on the zip code. And uh, the zip code depends on where the guy lives. You know, this, it's, it's the zip code plus 1163, you know, Street C202, that's, that's not really a place, but, but uh, um, uh, you know, that's, it's uh, this plus this plus this define Jonathan's address, and this and this really depend on this. Now, that's a roundabout, you know, why talk about this? It has to do with, with, with anomalies being able to be introduced into the database. If we just kept it this way, then it would be very easy for us to make a mistake and there'd be a record in there where it's 96825 and it says IA or, or, or uh, you know, where, where it, it happens to be different. Like maybe, maybe a 96, 96744 and someone puts uh, uh, Connie, uh, Kailua. Yeah, yeah. Someone puts Kailua. Yeah. 96744. Kailua, Kailua. Well, you know, that's, that's a mistake. It needs a mistake to make. To, now, it's a mistake. Which is wrong? The zip code, nine, it should it be 96834 or 96734? It should be, or it should be, or should it be Kaneohe? You know, so, so, um, uh, so, an anomaly would have been introduced, and and the and anomalies like that can get introduced if a if a if a relation is not in third normal form. So really, what we would do if we wanted to make sure that this whole thing was in, in when we talk about normalizing relations, we're talking about splitting a relation into more than one. So then we're talking about a, a, a database. You know, we're talking about a, a, a set of of relations. But really, we would take this single, this single um, uh, table, this, this relation, and we would break it up into two. And we would pull out city and state. We wouldn't have city and state you know, here anymore. Uh, in this table, we'd have a separate table that's got zip code as the primary key and city and state as just, just attributes of, of the tuple, of the three, three attribute tuple. And so we would only have one, two, three, no, I'm sorry, one, well, whatever Papu circle, I think, actually, I think Papu's, I think Papu circle might be, anybody know Papu, I think it's 96819, anyway, so, so let's say this is corrected, and, and so we'd have 96816, 96, 96819, and 96825, so we'd only have three, three records or three tuples in that, in that smaller relation, and uh, in this whole big thing, uh, it, it would only be missing the, the city and the state, okay? And um, so that would be the two, the, the, we'd have two relations instead of one, and then to be able to get back this, we have to get back this, right, if we're going to print out our list or we're going to make our mailing labels or whatever, uh, the way we get it back is, is we join the two tables together. It's a natural join. Both zip code, both columns are, there's, there's only, uh, we have these two relations and there's one common attribute in, in each of those, in, in the two relations and so you do a natural join and it naturally joins it together. That's, that's what we do here. Um, you, you, it's S natural join SP gives you this SP table with that has these columns, but also it has this there for every S1 and this there for every S2 and so on. Um, so this might not be uh, completely clear to you, but it's not bad that I that I went through this and um, explained it once. Uh, but um, this, uh, assignment one, if you recall, I, you know, the actual assignment one, I, I, I talked about these assignments, I, I, you know, not the quizzes, but the assignments, the quizzes are in this 
assignment with this first one, normalization, um, I'm going to give you a single table, you know, that's like, so, so I'm going to give you a single table, and then I want you to do, to do operations to break it down into, this, into the, the relations so they're all in the highest normal form. And so uh, it, for this particular, or it was a quiz, for this particular thing here, um, you know, you would, you would just do what's called a projection. You take this table uh, with, with it all fixed. And, and you do a projection. By projection, you just take the table, but you're only interested in a few attributes. You're not interested in all the attributes. You're, you're interested in this entire table, but, but we're only interested in the first name, last name, uh, the generation field, the address one, address two, and the zip code. That's all we're interested. We don't need the city and the state. So, so we do, uh, so we, we project this table, we do a projection, and we get, we get another relation that doesn't have these columns. It'll have the same number of rows as this one. Okay, that's one table. And then we take the same table again, and we do another projection, same projection on all the, on all the, the tuples, but this time we only want city, state, zip code. Okay, so we take this relation, we do a projection only on city, state, zip code, and we end up with a relation, right? So, this, so if we end up with a relation, that means it's in first normal form, that means there's no duplicates or anything, that means it's going to have this field, this field, and this field, but it's not going to have all of these because there's a bunch of, there will be a bunch of duplicates. There will be a whole bunch of, of Honolulu, Hawaii, 96825s. So when we take the projection, we take a relation, we do a projection, get another relation, it automatically deletes all the duplicate tuples because we want a relation out of it. And so, so then that's that. And um, uh, it, turns, it turns out that when we are doing these SQL statements, this is just, this is almost, this is almost just like an, as an aside. Well, when we do these SQL statements, um, you know, we are, we are going to do something which takes a full relation, do a projection, and the result is a, is a table that gets stored right in, the result is a relation that gets stored right into a table. That's going to be all in one statement. But uh, you, have, we, you actually have to tell it explicitly don't, uh, to get rid of all the duplicate tuples. So uh, with, with SQL, with, with MySQL, with, with any SQL, you can have duplicate tuples. You have to do, you have to, you have to make it explicitly that you don't want, want duplicate tuples. Um, there, there are a few things about S, that SQL does naturally that, um, that, that, that it could easily do automatically where, uh, I mean, it would be, uh, pretty easy to create an SQL language where every time you did an, an SQL operation, what was produced was a was in in first normal form. In other words, it has no it has no um, uh, duplicates. Uh, but we don't do that. Why do you think? Because there, for for efficiency reasons, um, to to be to uh, to do a bunch of operations. If you're doing if you're if you're doing an expression or you're evaluating an expression that's got a lot of terms in it, and you're doing a bunch of these, uh, the, it's, um, it can be expensive to ensure that after each operation you have a relation. Um, you know, you can just do a bunch of operations and let duplicate tuples pile up, and at the very end you do something to get rid of all the duplicate uh, tuples. So. Um, and, and uh, there's actually a term for it, but it's, they're, it's called a, they're called bags. Instead of a table, or instead of a relation, it's called a bag. And it, the only difference is it's, it's, it's got all the other properties of a relationship, ex a relation, except for the duplicate, except for it can have duplicates. Um, so anyway, um, so uh, it's 2.26. All right, well, um, so next time is chapter 3. And um, and let me just take a peek on what 
chapter three, we start talking about keys, foreign keys, and other stuff. And um, we talk about what the definition of a key is, and there's just some other stuff like um, uh, uniqueness and the fact that, you, you know, I talked about the, the relation that the one in the quiz example is, is the key has to, we have to use all the columns for the key, but, but, at, but most of the time you don't, or especially when you design your own system, when you're designing a database system, then you never have all the, all the, the, the attributes be a key. Um, but oftentimes you can have, um, uh, there's, there can be, a, there can be more than one set of attributes that can qualify as a key. Like for example, in, um, in um, MyUH, and uh, your, your uh, you know, when, you look, when I go to MyUH to look at your stuff, your eight-digit UHID plus your your UH your your username ID are both there. They're both there in, in columns, and everyone's got both. Uh, so I can so I can. Um, it doesn't matter which one I use. I can just decide. Um, you know, I, I I I like this one. Actually, it turns out that um, there are people that where we don't see their email address. So I think privacy reasons or something. But, um, and then so 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 very but but very but very simply quickly, and then I'll let you go. Um, and I probably said this already before. You probably know this already. But uh, if we go back to this thing, uh, you know, for this table here. This, of course, is the primary key because this because S three uniquely identifies the whole record. For this one, for this table, P and O is is the primary key. Uh, for for this one, it's it's the combination of both P and O and S and O which make it the primary key. So that's the primary key. But this is this in itself is a foreign key. Into it's into this foreign table over here, into the the key. This this corresponds to a primary key in a foreign table, which is this. So this this is a, this is a foreign key, and this is a foreign key. So um, and it's this this is where we you know the keys that we use to join. This is the anchors for joining relations together. All right, so. Um, Turn in your quiz, and I guess we'll see you next Monday, if this building is still here.